Hey folks, this is Damien with Southpaw, and uh, what I'd like to do today is really just give you an overview of uh, Easel, which is uh, easel.com. This is not a sponsored video or anything like that, um, I, but with my background in computer science and media arts, if I can uh, help the woodworking community a little bit with uh, uh, maybe getting over that learning curve with some with using CNC and using some different methods, uh, especially when it comes to software, I believe that's somewhere that I can be a benefit. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and dive right in. But before we do that, uh, I would appreciate you guys know the drill. Uh, that algorithm really loves uh, subscriptions. It loves likes. It loves comments and shares. So right down below, I really would appreciate it if you guys would subscribe. That's the biggest thing that can really help me. And watch a couple of those other videos. I'm really trying to get this uh, YouTube channel out there. This is uh, probably only the sixth or seventh uh, woodworking video that I've done. And I'm really trying to get some uh, some traction there. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I'm not worried about making a boatload of money on YouTube, but I do uh, just like the idea of building up an audience. So please hit that subscribe button there, watch a couple of my other videos, leave a comment or two, help me out there. So now let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, within Easel, now this is a free account. I've not paid for Easel Pro just yet, but I do like it. And once I start getting more into working with uh, uh, things that I would actually consider products that I'm going to sell, uh, I'll go with uh, the Pro. This program is not as robust as something like uh, Fusion 360. Fusion 360 is uh, designed really as CAD software, computer-aided design, uh, because you can build anything that you want. Now, Easel does not give you that. Easel um, is good for CNC, and it's also got a very low learning curve. So you can give it a shot. And the cool thing is when you create your account, they give you a 30 day free trial. So you can make that account and, um, uh, and then, you know, play around with it and see if it's something that's good for you. Again, not, they're not sponsored or anything like that. I just wanted to kind of give this review here. And now to start off with some of you guys know I teach, let's always, uh, and so I always tell my, my students to Name your project something that uh, is descriptive, something other than untitled. Now, right over here, you have the bit size and you have the type of material that you're using. You can choose uh, all types of different material, even going to metals like aluminum and acrylics and that kind of thing. And that's important because uh, based on what you choose, Easel will recommend um, different uh, bit settings, depths, and um, also uh, speeds. Now, speed is very important because you don't want to take like a 16th inch bit, for example, and just start wailing away on a piece of walnut. Um, so uh, Easel has a lot of these settings built in there. I wouldn't say it's dummy proof, but it is dummy resistant. Um, you can also change the size of the material that you're working with right there. So let's suppose I was going to go with a 24 by 12. And the thickness, since this is plywood, you know, a lot of the time the common thickness is uh, three quarters of an inch. Now, in this case, you really want to look at, you, you really want to get a pair of calipers out and see what the actual thickness of that uh, plywood or whatever that material is. Let's assume that it is a solid three quarters of an inch. So you set that. There you go. And then also, it will suggest the cut settings for you. Okay. Now, you may want to come in here and you might, you might want to, uh, to change these. Uh, but for for our purposes, uh, we're just going to stick with uh, the default settings there. And another nice thing is, is you can see that it's already got some bits that are uh, preloaded in here. Now, I'm not going to get into in this particular video how to set up your uh, your bits and how to do all of your uh, XYZ testing and all that. Um, that will be in a different vi video. But again, with the, the Pro, uh, you can add more bits. Um, you've got some V bits here. Actually, the V bits are just for the pro end mills. You got some of the more common ones in there, 16th, eighth inch and a quarter inch. These are all up cut. I don't see any down cut. There's straight bit or there's straight cut right there. So you have some options in there. So let's just stick with the, uh, well, actually let's go quarter of an inch. All right. So we have our quarter of an inch. There we go. Now we can zoom in and out, click and drag so we can change our, uh, view of it. All right. And then right over here is where you're actually going to do your design. Okay. So if I come in here, you'll see most of these fonts, most of the fun fonts 
are uh, are locked out. I tell you what, I'm going to change that from a quarter inch bit to an eighth inch bit because a lot of the smaller fonts won't work with those thicker uh, those thicker bits. So you can come over here and uh, let's find something that looks halfway decent. That's not one of the pros bangers. It's kind of a, a comic booky type font. You can come right in here. You notice it gives you a preview of what you're actually doing there. So. There we go. So we got our hello world. We can preview it there. We can move up and down, zoom in, zoom out. And also if you're using a trackpad, you can pinch or reverse pinch. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty intuitive there. Also this, um, this pop-up is context sensitive. So whenever you click on something, it will give that to you. Okay. Shows you the actual width and height of the cut shows you the actual position of the cut. And let's see, where is that position? Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, the orientation is right there on that corner. That's that's actually very important uh, because when you're setting up your, your material on your CNC, you wanna know uh, where, the, uh, where the origin is. So right now it says it's in that uh, bottom left-hand corner, but you can also change that, right? Um, the rotation, you can change the rotation of if you want to. So if you're working with different types of material or you just wanted to be able to control that, boom, you could do that. Okay, now they've got some text effects right there, uh, like some warps and some things that you'd find in the old PowerPoint. I don't get into those too much. But if you're doing like a bourbon barrel lid or something, some of these some of these different variations might come in handy. That could be a cool one right, right there, the convex bottom. Uh, that's something that could be uh, on kind of a rounded edge. If you come into the cut settings here, you see the depth of cut. That's very important. So uh, notice we've got depth of cut in this case of 0.3 inches, um, but we can change that depending on what the depth of our material is. Now, let's suppose we only wanted to go an eighth of an inch, would be, which would be 0.125. I can actually manually come in there and type that. And then also we have our cut path. So we can clear out a pocket. We can cut on the shape. And you can see the little preview right over here. So you see that's just going to cut out kind of a, uh, just an outline of it. We can cut outside the path or we can cut inside the path. So you have those four options. And th these are all by default. You know, these are all things, I'm, like I said, I've not paid for this uh, software. So, so there we go there. So you've got your text options. You also have some shapes that can be handy. I'll go ahead. Oops. That can be handy. And I'm not worried about building anything that's super amazing right now. Uh, I'm just kind of showing you some of these options. And let's see. So you could actually come in there and you could do a. Ah, here we go. Uh, had a little brain fart right there. Uh, let's see. Let's cut on the shape so we could actually turn that into a just an outline right there. Uh, we don't necessarily have to have to clear out that whole amount. So if you wanted to to have your shapes on there, got some basic shapes, but you can get creative with those. They don't have to be circles and squares. You can easily modify those into rectangles and uh, ovals. Uh, we have a line tool right here, so you can actually create your own shapes if you wanted to. Now that's gonna be limited by your artistic ability, but you can do that. We have a pro design library in here that has a lot of, uh, has a lot of things built into it. Um, another nice thing, if you already have, I think I've mentioned it before, if you already have the, um, if you already have a design in a vector format that's already set up an SVG file, you can actually import your SVGs. So you can import your SVGs right there. You can also import your G code. And then when you're finished, let's suppose that this beautiful little piece of artwork right here was ready to go. I'm gonna straighten that out a little bit more. I'm gonna widen that a little bit and scooch that over. So it actually looks halfway decent. What am I doing wrong there? There we go. Now let's move that. There we go. So that's ready for cutting. Um, but as I was saying, 
uh, if you have your own SVG files, you can import those. And then when you're done and you're ready to, to, to download it for, uh, for cutting purposes, you just download that G code right there and boom, it's ready to go. All right. So that is a quick, simple, down and dirty intro to using uh, Easel. It's a great starter tool for CNC. Um, and it doesn't cost you anything to start with, but they do have a lot of uh, good advanced features uh, if you go with the pro version. I'm not going to get into that. You can go to the website and see that. As I've said, it's, uh, it's not, this isn't meant to be a selling uh, point uh, or a, sell, a sales video. Uh, I just thought I would show you some of the things that I've run across and show you that getting into CNC is not that difficult. Um, so with that, again, I really would appreciate a subscribe down there, a comment, a like, and a share, and that really helps out, and then watch some of my other videos. So with that, get to it, and uh, please let me know if uh, there's anything you'd like to see, any, any other types of videos. Uh, I really want to uh, make this channel, as I've said, I want to make this channel as good as possible, and I want to make it useful to people. So uh, that only happens if you uh, let me know what you'd like to see. Thank you, and bye-bye.